Hey folks, it's Brian Gregg, back with another RWD screencast. Today we're going to be looking at callback functions. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about how you can implement your own callback functions. This is something that um, has always eluded me a bit, and um, I just thought that it would be helpful to kind of explain it, talk it through, uh, both for my own benefit and for your benefit, to hopefully get a little bit of a better understanding about how these work. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at a example here. Um, we're going to create um, we're going to create a kind of a boilerplate HTML file. I'm going to add in a script here, and uh, within this script, what we're going to do is uh, just to start out, we're going to create a function. Uh, this is going to be our caller function. This uh, eventually will be the function that we'll use to execute our callback. And we're just gonna um, use this as a way of um, logging a statement back to the console. This is gonna tell us that uh, this is the caller function. We're gonna execute that function. And if you look here, when we execute that caller function, we can see that uh, it is pushing the value from the console.log back, back to the console. So this is exactly what we'd be expecting and uh, it's a fairly trivial example. Uh, but what we want to do is we want to look at um, how we can actually pass a function uh, to within this caller function and uh, execute that after um, the rest of this um, function has completed. So we are going to use um, a feature called the call function, which is part of the function prototype, which is going to allow us to execute the function that is passed to caller and we're going to pass an anonymous function uh, that function is just going to also do a console log and it's going to tell us that this is the callback function the expected behavior here would be that our function will console log the caller function and it'll subsequently console log out the callback function which is exactly what we're seeing here now um, in addition to that, what we want to do is uh, we want to make this a little bit more robust. Uh, so instead of using the call function, we're going to use the bind function. Uh, the bind function is going to make sure that we, uh, uh, we, we retain our scope and uh, it's going to allow us to uh, be able to bind this callback function to a uh, function within our caller called CB. And then instead of passing an anonymous function in there, we are going to create a new function and we're going to call that uh, fun. And uh, this is just going to be a uh, uh, just before readability. Uh, so instead of passing an anonymous function to caller, we're just going to pass fun. And this should behave exactly the same way as the last example, except we are now binding the function, which is going to help us a little bit when we start passing parameters. So um, we are going to, in addition to passing fun, uh, we are also going to pass a string value into our caller function. And this string value is going to be the parameter that we're going to pass to fun. And this will um, actually pass, uh, allow us to, within the bound, uh, bound function, to uh, be able to pass the parameter value to the function that we've defined. And just for scoping purposes, I'm going to create a parameter. I'm going to name it P. And then we are going to append P to our string. And uh, we are going to finally in our CB function, uh, we're going to make sure that we uh, pass the parameter to our caller function and make sure that it's in our function definition. Uh, we are again going to uh, just uh, assign P to a local parameter value to ensure scoping. And we're going to pass P to that function. And now we can see that uh, it is 
calling that function. Uh, it is executing all of the logic within the caller function. It is binding the function to our um, to our CB local function, and it is passing P to our function and um, allowing it to accept the parameter that's being passed. Uh, and the benefit here is that uh, we now have the ability to um, to uh, execute a function and then uh, define what is going to get executed after that function completes. Uh, hopefully this gives you a little bit more clarification on how uh, binding and how callback functions in general work within JavaScript and uh, always welcome comments. So if uh, you've got some comments or questions, uh, please leave them in the comment section or get me on Twitter at IgnoreIntuition. Thank you.